What's up guys, Ryan here. So real quick, I just wanted to go over some print on demand t-shirt design tips. And we're gonna start from the very top. So here are the e-commerce platforms that I'm most interested in. Uh, Amazon, Amazon Merch, Etsy, and Redbubble. Those are like rounding out my, let's just say top four, even though Amazon Merch and Amazon are the same. When I say Amazon, I'm thinking of uploading to them via either Gearbubble or Printful are the two primaries that I use right now and it is FBM products. So when you upload through Amazon Merch, it's FBA, they're Prime eligible and Merch fulfills them. But to upload FBM products, you need a Seller Central account, a professional account, which costs $39.99 a month. But uh, it's also, I mean, the whole thing that I preach in Ryan's Method Passive Income School is how your FBA business is complementary to selling your FBM print-on-demand products, which also complements if you have an Amazon Merch account to sell your FBA-ish prime eligible uh, print-on-demand products through there as well. Uh, all of this is complimentary. And then you also are listing your products on Etsy and fulfilling them through Printful. And it's all very easy to do. It all complements each other. And if you're good at one, it'll benefit the other uh, business model. So this is how I start my t-shirt design process. And also, by the way, if you're wondering, Printful is my print-on-demand production partner of choice because they don't have monthly fees. I know a lot of people are on Gearbubble. I started with Gearbubble. I don't pay monthly fees. I got them for free for a lifetime, but I had to pay to join one of the creators of Gearbubble's course to get them, even though I didn't care about the course. Anyways, all right, so I start off with a t-shirt design template. I personally just call it m.psd, which stood for merch when I initially named it that. And you can actually download this file from my blog post right here for free. It's a PSD file. And when you download it and open it, it's automatically the canvas size is set to the Amazon Merch standard t-shirt uh, design size, which is 4,500 pixels wide by 5,400 pixels tall. Then you have the white and black backgrounds built in. So depending on what style of t-shirt you're designing for, toggle those on and off very quickly, very easily. If you wanna just go ahead and make a simple text design, and when I hit T to launch the text tool, it takes a while because I have so many fonts installed. But you know, I can do my go-to hug dealer t-shirt. The way that I approach design is I always start with my m.psd file, which is again optimized at the dimensions I need it at for Amazon Merch. But also I should just mention that if you optimize your designs at these dimensions, they work great on any other print-on-demand platform. They work great when you upload to Printful and then push to your Etsy store. They work great on Redbubble. They, if you wanna push FBM t-shirts or put these designs on any other FBM product on Amazon, they work great. So this is a great dimension to design at. Also, another benefit of using this completely free uh, PSD file that I put together is that if you want to distress your designs, you can do so very easily because on this channels tab, I put a grunge distressed image that you can easily use to, again, like I said, just distress your designs. So you can see what I did there. Just made this distressed very quickly, very easily. I put another tutorial together of how to do that. It's called Simple T-Shirt Design Methods Part Two, and I'll put a link in the description or I'll put like a YouTube card in there linking to that video, but yeah. Essentially, I think you should use a templated approach to creating designs. So if that just means downloading my free template and starting from there, the next time you start, you go into a design session, I think that'll help. And second thing that I'd like to recommend doing is always saving a white version of your designs and a black version. So as you can see here, I would call this the white version. The white text version looks great against a, back, a black background. But what about a light colored background? It's not uncommon that different products are offered in different colors, right? So what I do is I just use Photoshop's color overlay feature and apply the opposite color. So if I have white text, I'll just put a black color overlay on it. And then you can see it contrasts great against the opposite colored background. The benefit of doing this is that you can essentially double the amount of designs that you create. So as you can see here, my hug dealer example, if you create a white version and a black version, then you're able to upload to two different style of t-shirts. And don't overlook the value here. It's easy to think like, oh, this isn't anything special, but when it comes to like winning the battle on Amazon of getting that initial t-shirt 
sale it's not the initial sale but to get the t-shirt sale you have to get the initial click from search results by far most people are uploading white colored designs on dark colored shirts so you have the potential to stand out by being one of the few uploading a dark colored design against a light colored background shirt so keep that in mind again sometimes just like a little edge to be had like that can make all the difference and then also when you expand into other products like when i talked about uploading to amazon via fbm fulfilled by merchant in this case these are gear bubble products and what i did is i took my little hug dealer text rendered it in white and then put that on black coffee mugs rendered it in black and put that on white coffee mugs shot glasses and even pillowcases in some cases not a lot of people think to sell them i've actually found some designs that work i didn't even go looking for existing designs they just kind of came to me and yeah, I've had some success, nothing crazy, nothing that I would be like bragging to anybody about, but I do get pillowcase sales on Amazon every now and then. And keep in mind that like, if you have a clever design that sells well on a t-shirt, then you should put it on a coffee mug, a shot glass and a pillowcase. It doesn't hurt. If you, especially if you have the, if you're paying for the gear bubble integrations, make sure you're using it. Cause that's a monthly fee. I hate monthly fees when it's not necessary. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. And then when it comes to managing your graphic design files, this is how I do mine. I just figured I'd throw this tip in there because managing your offline files, it matters a lot. Uh, like I'm at a point now where, and I know Amazon Merch just released an announcement that now when you upload to Merch, they're gonna last, I think, 365 days. I remember the days where they lasted 90 days and you were constantly re-uploading. And then they doubled that to 180 and things felt a little bit more relaxed, but now it's up to 365. So this isn't, I guess, as important, but if you're not creating a new design and then immediately uploading it to every platform and every product, then you might need to come up with an upload strategy and keep track of like what's been uploaded where. So what I do is I categorize all of my designs based on the first letter of the file name, put them in the corresponding folder, and then, and this also helps with the Merch Titans automation uploading tool, which I cannot tell you how much I love because I don't have to upload products anymore. Like while I'm recording this video, I'm uploading to Amazon Merch and to my Shopify store. And I'm not even touching those, it's just done for me. What I do is I'll create an Excel file corresponding to my alphabetical folders. And when I've uploaded every design in that folder, I just put a little checkbox in there and move on to the next one. And I do it in like a matrix of, this letter folder, this platform. So Amazon Merch just had all of the W folders uploaded. Now we're gonna move on to the V folders or the U folders. And I put my Merch Titans automation spreadsheet in, in each corresponding alphabetical folder. So I know I'm getting into the weeds here a little bit, but I think it's very important to keep your designs categorized so that you know that you've successfully uploaded them to all of the products you want them uploaded on and all of the platforms you want them uploaded on. And when your print on demand business is ready to go to the next level and you have, let's say a couple hundred designs ready to be uploaded, you should absolutely invest in the Merch Titans automation tool because it can upload to Merch, Printful, Redbubble, Spreadshirt, TeePublic, Teespring, and Zazzle all at the same time. They also have a Kindle Direct Publishing automation app and they're constantly working on this tool. I always bring it up in my print on demand videos because I can't get enough of it, guys. But anyways, I think that's it for this video. Yep. Uh, so if you liked it, guys, please hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, feedback, or comments, hit me up below, and I'll get back to you. But thank you, guys. I'll see you at the next one.